Yes. Good morning, all. Selamat pagi semua. Um, last week you have uh, done your live streaming, eh? So uh, I hope you enjoy your live streaming. It might be the first time, okay? Or some of you might be very experienced. So I hope that you enjoy it, and I I believe that you learn something, eh, from the live streaming, okay? So if you want to continue to do your selling, you still can continue. Okay, you can continue to do your selling. Masih uh, boleh mengambil order. You still can take order. You still can sell until until uh, because this week is week ten. So until week week twelve lah. Okay, paling ujung ialah week twelve. So you have about this week until week twelve, three weeks to continue to do your selling. Eh? Remember, you have the target of sales okay target jualan you have to target of sales so you should try to use your last three weeks to continue to do your selling because by week uh, 13 week 13 actually you have to do the presentation lah, pembentangan, lah, pembentangan akhir. you have to do the presentation of your report of of this whole project okay this whole project so i hope that you really um try your best uh, to sell within at least these two weeks these few weeks at least you you get to get uh try your best okay you get the uh, as much sales as possible okay tetapi saya pun faham uh, i also know that uh, some of you in some areas are bad, badly hit, affected uh, before this is due to the covid okay especially those staying in camp campus uh, ums you might be affected by the recent COVID. you are not allowed to go out okay this one you let me know if you are really affected besides that uh some of you who are living in the uh, near the selangor sha'aram these places if you are really uh, affected by the flood condition you let me know what uh. okay so Before I continue, if you have any question, you can ask now. And then remember, we have the uh, attendance link. Okay, share in the chat chat box. If we have the attendance link, share in the chat box. Please, please fill in your attendance. Huh? Okay, so, all right. Let's start with our new unit. Today we are going to look at unit 7 and unit 8. Okay, we are going to look at two units. Uh, both these two units are not very long units, so we can cover it within uh, one lecture. So unit 7, we are looking at um, financial management and accounting. Okay, We are looking at financial management and accounting. So in this topic, in this topic you are going to look at... Uh, how to the importance the importance to prepare the financial management okay why do you need to prepare the financial financial management and accounting next you will uh, learn how to prepare the income statement balance sheet and cash flow in a business how to prepare the income statement the balance sheet and cash flow in the business and to to know that what are the potential financial resources and government support okay to help you to help to develop your business okay before i continue you can see my slide right okay you can hear me right if you have problem in seeing the slide or you cannot hear me you let me know huh? boleh nampak kan slide boleh nampak huh? ada ada yang cakap tiap boleh boleh ya Ken ah sama nanti answer ready thank you thank you alright so we continue with unit seven lah eh? in unit seven there are few short short topics okay or short thing uh, some topics that you need to learn number one is what are the importance of financial accounting apakah kepentingan uh, pengurusan kewangan ini and then second, the type of cost. Apakah cost yang kamu perlu bayar? There are a few types of cost. There are a few ways of uh, differentiate the cost. 
setiap berbagai jenis kos lah. Kita boleh kumpulkan sebagai jenis-jenis yang berbeza. And then we have financial statement, iaitu pengiata kewangan. We have three financial statements, which later I will uh, explain using Excel. I will use Excel to show you step by step how to prepare your financial statement. So you need to prepare financial statement in your final report. Okay, dalam laporan akhir anda perlu sediakan ini ya, tiga, tiga penyata kewangan. So I will give you the Excel. You use the Excel to prepare your financial statement. If you check the Schoology, Schoology resources there, I already upload the financial uh, statement the format in Excel. You can use that. Huh? You can just put in your own information and put in uh, use, use that to prepare it. The formulas are already prepared there. You just need to download it to put in your data. Okay, simple angka-angka kamu tu, and then you get the final statement. And then you need to know what are the potential financial resources you can get and the break-even point. So these are the short topics that you learn under financial management accounting. Huh? Okay, so in financial management and accounting here, the first thing is you need to know what are the importance. Mengapa kita perlu tahu financial accounting and financial management? Okay, you can see our financial management is the management, pengurusan kewangan. So when we say management of the money, we include the planning. We do budget. We budget how much money we want to use for uh, marketing. We budget how much money we have for operation, how much money we have for for uh, development of products. So we have the planning. And then we make sure we use the money uh, in the best way. Lah using the money in the best way. So when you start to do business, you know, okay? I think now you already experienced that. You have very little resources, very little money. Eh? So if you are facing this problem, this problem, one very important thing is you plan first how to use your very small budget, very small capital to to do your business okay so that is something that you you need to uh, at least you start to plan huh? so last week we are looking at unit nine i mean the week before the the week uh, last week week uh, eight we are looking at the uh, management the first step in management is to do planning so financial management also the same thing when you plan for your how to use your money that is actually the first step okay if you don't plan you might not use the money in in the best way okay so in management financial management as well you need to plan first and when we say accounting the word accounting refers to the record okay the recording of the finance uh, information in your company in the proper way so kalau lah orang buat uh, business di pasar, record saja kan kita record jumlah oh, berapa kita jual hari ini, itu saja. We just record, 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 record. But that is not the proper way. Itu bukan cara yang betul, cuma kamu ada recording. So in this topic, you need to know the right way, cara yang betul untuk men, uh, membuat recording. Okay, record of the financial uh, information this recording is known as accounting okay so accounting is the recording of the financial information to record uh, how much money you use how much money you you receive okay and by looking at this you know your performance of the company pencapaian syarikat dari segi performance of the company from uh, the perspective of how much profit or loss you 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 are making okay uh, and also you see whether you are selling a, a big amount of products or small amount which product is more popular and so on so these are the information you can get from your accounting management uh, record there okay so what are the importance here let's look at it in detail when we say business financial management like i say just now it is the planning of financial resources in a company. 
Okay, you plan the use of the financial resources. So you plan how much you want to use the usage and the receive how much money you think you can receive to achieve the maximum profit. So you are trying to use the money in the best way, in another word. You use it uh, the effective way. Okay, paling berkesan untuk mendapat keuntungan pulangan yang paling tinggi. So what are the importance of financial accounting? First, when you do the recording of the financial data, you can analyze the company's financial position. You know whether the company is doing it uh, right or you know whether the company is um, is um, making a loss. Okay, at least you can analyze your company performance financially. Okay, keuntungan atau kerugian pun kamu boleh lihat. Selain itu, um, if a company is doing um, wisely, okay, using the financial resources they have wisely, they can make use of that money to do more investment. Okay, membuat uh, pelaburan yang baru. Contohnya melaput dalam kedai yang baru atau membuat pelaburan dalam perniagaan yang baru dan sebagainya. So they can open a new shop if they know that they have lots of financial resources. Or if they know that they are not doing well, then they know, oh, we have to do some um, improvement to our financial condition so that we can save the uh, money that we waste on other places or other things. Okay, and next. The second importance of financial accounting is to ensure that you have enough adequate uh, financial resources financial resources for the future for doing business like tomorrow you want to uh, produce the product for sale okay you want to produce the product for sale but you might find that uh, you need to buy raw materials you need to buy something okay to prepare that product for sale so you need to have money to buy the raw materials the packaging items and other things okay other things so Bear in mind, um, a good financial accounting record will help you to ensure that you have enough money to buy your raw materials, to, to do promotion, and so on. Okay, next, to evaluate the success of the company financially. Okay, apakah kejayaan syarikat dari segi kewangan? Kejayaan syarikat dari segi kewangan kita lihat dari segi apakah keuntungan yang diperolehi, uh, berapakah jumlah jualan yang diperolehi, apakah uh, peningkatan dari segi keuntungan per perbanding tahun lalu. So when we look at this, actually we are looking at uh, whether you manage the company in uh, successfully or not. Okay, kejayaan anda. Kalau syarikat itu mengalami kerugian, tidak semestinya syarikat itu sudah gagal. Some companies might face a uh, um, loss in certain time, but after that they can change it. Okay, they can change and they become a even more successful company. Okay, and one example of those companies are such as like Apple. Apple, uh? so every company knows, uh, everybody knows what is Apple, right? They are selling a uh, very high-end uh, products such as uh, handphones, such as um, this uh, computer and uh, the what you call that uh, tablet kind of products. So at one time, Apple is not doing very well, okay, not doing very well, but they successfully changed their condition to become very success after that, okay. Jadi, after we evaluate whether the company is successful or not, kita boleh buat perubahan. Okay, so the important things of financial accounting is we provide information for the management, for the company to make better decision later. Okay, to make better decision. And then number four, help to generate the corporate finance. Membantu mendapat lebih uh, sumber kewangan untuk syarikat. For example, when the company need more money to do business, ah, uh, when the company want to expand, uh, membuka kedai baru. Contohnya uh, untuk uh, memulakan satu pasaran baru, kita perlukan kewangan lebih. Okay? Jadi 
apa yang kita boleh buat ialah you can go for uh, you can go to borrow money. Tetapi untuk meminjam wang dari bank atau wang dari apa-apa agensi pun kita perlukan record record perkhidmatan. Okay, uh, a lot of companies they they fail to get the finance. Kita dapat pinjam wang kerana mereka tidak ada rekod kewangan yang boleh membuktikan mereka sedang membuat bisnes dengan baik. Okay, so that is important for a good a company to prepare a good uh, record of the financial. Okay, it will help them to get the finance pinjam wang dari uh, agensi ke kerajaan ataupun pinjam wang dari dari uh, pihak bank. And number five. To assist in decision making of the company, like I say, selepas kita membuat penilaian terhadap kejayaan syarikat, kita membuat analisis kedudukan kewangan syarikat, dan kita bolehlah buat keputusan apa yang lebih uh, apa tindakan yang lebih sesuai untuk syarikat ini. For example, if we know that we are doing uh, well, okay, kita buat dengan baik sebelumnya, so. Uh, it means that we can continue to use the same strategies. Tetapi jika syarikat itu mengalami masalah sudah, masalah dengan kewangan syarikat, okay, masalah dengan um, um, pengurusan wang ini. Jadi kita boleh buat keputusan, okay, buat, buat keputusan untuk menukar strategi kita. Okay, we might need to change our strategy based on our financial Uh, record based on our financial condition and so on. Okay, so to make decision is uh, very important. Sometimes, especially when we want to decide, ah, sama ada syarikat ini ingin melapor untuk membuka kedai palu atau tidak. Okay, you need to make this decision. But before you make this decision, you need to know you have enough money to do that. Okay, Kata, kalau syarikat tiada uh, sumber kewangan, untuk membuka syarikat paru, adakah syarikat ini dapat meminjam wan dari bank untuk membuka kedai paru? Kalau dapat, kalau dapat, ini bermakna, ini bermakna syarikat ini boleh teruskan rancangan untuk membuka kedai paru. Tetapi jika syarikat ini tidak dapat meminjam wang pada masa yang sama syarikat ini tidak mempunyai sumber kewangan, jadi syarikat ini terpaksa menukar strategi. Okay, tidak boleh membuka kedai baru di kawasan ini. Mungkin syarikat ini mesti memikirkan cara lain. For example, you do online business rather than you open a new shop. So, these are the importance of financial accounting in management. So, after that, we look at what are the different types of costs. Okay, when we do business, remember, I keep on saying, uh, we... we One of the very important thing is we are looking at for return, pulangan. Pulangan biasanya dilihat dari segi keuntungan. Tetapi pulangan boleh juga dilihat dari segi nilai saham yang lebih tinggi. Okay, nilai saham syarikat yang lebih tinggi. Ataupun syarikat ini memiliki, mempunyai aset yang lebih banyak. Okay, the company might be... Uh, earning a similar profit, but the company is uh, able to earn more assets. Seperti memberi kedai baru, memberi uh, sum, uh, mesin yang baru dan sebagainya. So, these are the example of a better return. Okay, selain itu, untuk sebuah syarikat, kita mementingkan sama ada syarikat ini boleh berlangsung untuk jangka masa yang lama atau tidak. Whether the company able to survive, sustain, sustain, For a long term, okay. Sustain for a long term means that the company able to make do business ah, not only for one or two years after that close down, but the company able to do business for a long time. And last, the growth of the company, perkembangan syarikat, okay, perkembangan syarikat sehingga um, syarikat ini boleh menjadi lebih besar daripada sebelum itu. So the company, for example, a small shop. Uh, you can see in uh, in Malaysia a small shop, maybe just a shop in uh, selling a small a retail shop, lah, selling to the people in the 
area. But after that, that shop start to grow. Okay, berkembang, kemudian menjadi um, sebuah syarikat yang besar. Okay, so you can see there are lots of this kind of uh, shop in Malaysia also. Dan ada juga yang dia mula membuka kedai-kedai baru, kedai kecil yang baru. Dan kedai-kedai kecil ini dibuka di merata-rata tempat. Okay, so you can see there are lots of shop like this. So this is under growth, perkembangan, okay, pembangunan. So how much capital you need for company to do business, to sustain their business and to grow their business is uh, depends on what type of business the company is doing, okay. Dan apakah perniagaan, uh, apakah produk dan perkhidmatan yang mereka jual. Contohnya untuk syarikat seperti uh, syarikat seperti uh, yang menjadi uh, retail seperti supermarket, supermarket memerlu, memerlukan kapital modal yang banyak, okay, modal yang banyak. Tetapi untuk syarikat yang membuat uh, perniagaan di atas talian, so their working capital is much smaller. Or company that provide uh, services, perkhidmatan. Seperti uh, syarikat yang menyediakan perkhidmatan uh, pen, uh, pen, perkhidmatan latihan, okay, latihan usahawan. Apa yang mereka perlukan sebenarnya uh, aset yang diperlukan ataupun capital yang diperlukan hanyalah beberapa komputer untuk me memulakan perniagaan. But for a company who are doing retail, they need more capital. Mereka perlu modal untuk memberi stok untuk dijual. Okay, so depends. Dan capital ini, capital yang diperlukan untuk membuat perniagaan setiap hari. Okay, we call it capital uh, expenditure or working capital. Work, working, cap, uh, working capital, working capital semua ini ialah capital atau modal yang diperlukan untuk membuat perniagaan jangka masa panjang. Bukan jangka masa pendek, tetapi jangka masa panjang. So there are when, uh, few type of costs. In simple, you can say the cost. There are two major type of costs. We have cost of goods sold. Okay, cost of goods sold are the costs that directly uh, involved in the production of product or service. For example, raw material cost, cost untuk memberi bahan mentah, cost untuk uh, men Menyediakan produk seperti uh, electricity, okay, electricity untuk menyediakan produk dan perkhidmatan. So these are the direct costs to produce the product or service. And we also have the delivery cost, for example, the delivery of service to the customers. So these are the delivery costs. Huh? Cost, this cost is known as the cost of goods sold. We also have operating expense, expenditure. Operating expenditure are the costs, costs that indirectly related to the production of products or service. It can be any type of cost. For example, operation cost, for example, management cost, pengurusan, cost pengurusan, logistic cost, promotion cost. Contohnya, untuk membuat promosi, kita uh, membuat uh, pengiklanan dalam Facebook app. Okay, contohlah. We do a promotion in the Facebook app. So when we do promotion in the Facebook app, we need to pay like, uh, katakanlah contohnya, uh, promotion yang kecil saya bayar 3000 untuk membuat promosi dalam uh, bulan ini, ya, sebelum hujung tahun ini. This is for example. So this co cost, promotion cost, is not directly related to, to how many products I produce. Okay? It only related to the promotion, okay? Jadi ini di di bawah kategori operating cost. Begitu juga dengan logistic cost seperti cost untuk menyewa satu gerai, okay? Cost untuk menyerak nyewa gerai, ataupun cost untuk menyewa kenderaan to to rent a car to send the things. These are indirectly related because you rent a car. Uh, for one day, katakanlah uh, 200 ringgit untuk <coughs> sorry, 200 ringgit untuk menyewa satu kereta untuk membuat penghantaran tetapi uh, 
berapa kuantiti yang kamu hantar tu berkantung kepada uh, faktor lain lah, bukan berkantung kepada berapa kenderaan kamu sewa. So this is indirect cost. Same thing with op some other operational cost, okay, management cost. So these are the costs that you you can uh, you have to pay. But at the same time, we also can um, use a different way to categorize the cost. Okay, kita boleh meng mengkumpulkan cost itu di bawah fixed cost atau variable cost. Fixed cost, uh, in Malay we call it cost tetap, cost tetap. Variable cost ialah cost yang berubah. Okay, so look at here. So cost tetap ini tidak akan berubah jika jika kuantiti yang kita jual meningkat. Katakan kuantiti jualan ialah kosong. Okay, kuantiti jualan di sini ialah kosong. Cost tetap ini, fixed cost will remain at this value. If the quantity increase from zero here, quantity increase from here to here, okay, nampak tu lah di bawah ah. The quantity increase from here, one quantity, two, three, four, five, until 100 or 1,000 here, the fixed cost still remain the same. So the fixed cost are, for example, salaries, yaitu uh, kaji pengurus, insurance, sewa, machine, and other type of costs. But for variable cost, cost yang berubah, cost yang berubah, Kos perubah ini akan meningkat, okay? Akan meningkat jika kuantiti meningkat. Jika kuantiti ialah kosong, kuantiti kosong, kos uh, perubah ini variable cost will remain zero, okay? If the quantity is zero, the more quantity we sell, the cost, the variable cost will increase. So the red color represent the variable cost. Uh, you can see, ah. Uh, the higher the quantity you sell, the variable cost will increase higher. Okay, so this is one important rule of thumb here. You can see that fixed cost must, must uh, less than 30% of the total cost. How do you know how much is the total cost? Jumlahkan kedua, sum up the two. So fixed cost plus variable cost, you will get total cost. Okay. So the total cost is represented by the line here. So the fixed cost must not must not very higher. We have to control our fixed cost to be much lower than variable cost. Okay, fixed cost must be less than thirty percent of the total cost. Maksudnya fixed cost ini, um, contohnya di sini ya, fixed cost is almost half can almost half of the total cost the line here the top line here represent the total cost huh? so the fixed cost almost the half so this is still not good enough what we can do is actually we should try to increase further the sales quantity meningkatkan jualan okay when we increase the sales quantity then you can see that the variable cost will continue to increase when the variable cost continue to increase, it means that the percentage of the proportion of variable cost will be reduced. Oh, sorry, the proportion of variable cost will be higher as compared to fixed cost. Okay, kita buat pembantingan variable cost. Cost perubahan ini uh, akan uh, menjadi lebih banyak kalau quantity meningkat berbanding dengan fixed cost. Okay, so that is the rule of thumb. You, uh, you have to understand. So like uh, just now, uh, I explained like delivery cost, raw material cost, cost of goods sold, semua cost ini yala di bawah category variable cost. Okay, cost of goods sold, cost barangan jualan, okay, cost barangan jualan, yala di bawah cost perubah, variable cost. So this raw material cost, uh, delivery cost also under variable cost. While operating cost, operating cost biasanya dia bukan di bawah variable cost, tetapi di bawah fixed cost. Okay, so so we are looking at the type of cost here. Don't confuse yourself. Just uh, to to categorize, what are the different type of cost just now? Uh? 
Okay, next we are looking at the financial statement. Now I say financial statement must be reported when you prepare your final report. Okay, di mana anda ada tiga pengata kewangan. Three financial statement you have to prepare. So if I put the word pro forma, the word pro forma means that is a projected or in another word is a budget. Budget ah, budget maksudnya not the actual one, just a budget. Uh, you budget, uh, I think I can use uh, 100 ringgit to buy my raw material, 50 ringgit to do promotion, 20 ringgit to do delivery. That is just your budget. Budget, okay, you based on your assumption. How do you make your budget is you, you based on, uh, I think I can sell 100 units. So my budget of 100 units cost ma raw materials is 100 ringgit, katakanlah. Okay, so you based on certain assumptions. I think I can sell uh, 100 units or I think I can sell uh, 200 units and we think that the market is good, we can sell our product and so on. So these are assumptions. Andayan saja. Andayan akan berlaku. Okay, kita buat jangkaan, jangkaan ini dapat dijual. Okay, so that is projected. But in your final report, in your final report, you throw away the proforma. You don't need a projected already. You need a final financial statement. Okay, financial, final financial statement. So you have three final financial statement you have to prepare. No longer proforma. Okay. The first is income statement. Income statement ialah penyata pendapatan. Penyata pendapatan. Eh? So this is the term that we use in business. Jangan pantai-pantai ubah. If you want to uh, write in Malay, please refer to the Malay slide. Eh? Slide in Malay. Okay. What is the purpose of income statement is to predict the profit or loss of the business. To predict lah. How much is the profit? How much is the loss of the business? Okay, the second one, the balance sheet. The balance sheet is not on, not just to forecast, but to show you what are the assets and liabilities of a company. Apakah jumlah aset dan hutang? Liabilities are the, um, the money that we owe people, uh, hutang syarikat. So, how much is the asset? assets? and liabilities, hutang syarikat. And last, we are doing a cash flow statement. So cash flow statement is to show you how much cash you use and how much cash you receive in the company. Contohnya, kamu, uh, step pertama biasanya kita buat business, kita mulakan dengan pengumpulan capital, uh, modal syarikat. So we, uh, we come uh, we we compile or we total up or how much money we have. Okay, we put together our money to do the business. So the money that you have, we call it capital or modal syarikat. So this is the first amount of money that you receive. Record lah dalam cash flow statement. Okay, you record here in your cash flow statement. After that, when you and whenever you use your money to buy things. For expenses, any type of expenses, you record here, cash flow statement. And the money that you receive, okay, contohnya dari segi uh, bayaran jualan, jualan, uh, mereka bayar anda, you receive the money, then you also record here. So you have three statements that you must prepare, you should prepare for your final report. Okay, I will show you the simple format first later i later on i will show you step by step how to prepare it okay so this is the income statement like i say if you do a budget sebelum perniagaan pemula we call it pro forma income statement tetapi selepas perniagaan ini dijalankan kita hanya menyediakan one inc income statement eh? we only prepare income statement not pro forma income statement okay and for example, for your business, because we normally when we do business, we do it for one year, uh, account for one year. Okay, kita buat account sekali untuk satu tahun. Nah, kita sediakan ini sekali untuk setahun. Okay, untuk se sebuah syarikat, satu income statement, one income statement for one year. But for your business, since you need to prepare a record, right? So you put month. Okay, you might prepare it for just three months. So we put month and the uh, 
uh, maybe 30th June 2020. Okay, we no longer put it a year, for year ended 30th June 2020. Yeah? So the format here, you will see a uh, revenue, Jala. Okay, after that, minus the cost of goods sold, cost menyediakan barangan untuk dijual, seperti cost uh, paham mentah, raw materials. After you minus, minus it, you will get the gross profit. After that, you will minus all the other expenses, joran, uh, cost cost yang lain, perbelanjaan yang lain, and you will get the net profit. Okay, so this is the income statement. Lah. Seperti yang saya kasih bagi kita tadi, yang paling penting ialah kita lihat gross profit and net profit. Hasnya net profit. Net profit is the most important. I'll be making money profit from this business. And next, we are looking at balance sheet. So for balance sheet, also the same thing. Normally, when we do balance sheet, we prepare for one year. Okay, but for this example, we only prepare it for month. Okay, for for month only. So we you might have fixed asset, kalau ada asset tetap. We have also have current asset. Uh, asset sama contohnya cash. Tunai yang kamu ada, inventory. We also have uh, liability. Liability ialah hutang. Hutang, kita ada hutang jangka pendek, contohnya loan, customer deposit. We also have financing uh, ataupun pinjaman jangka panjang, more than one year. More than one year is jangka panjang. So, hutang ditulis di sini. Okay, all the figures. And then, owner's equity ialah capital and profit. So, both you have to write it down. Huh? And then you will get the total. Total kan semua ini. And then you total it here. So the total asset must be equal to the total liability and owner equity. Okay. The total uh, ini mesti sama lah. Nilai di sini sebelah kiri mesti sama dengan nilai di sebelah kanan. That is why we call it balance sheet. It must be balanced lah. Okay. It must be balance. In Malay, we call it uh, kunci kira-kira. Okay, kunci kira-kira. So, here you will know uh, the total asset must be equal to this part. This is one of the format lah. Uh. Ini dipanggil T format. Okay, T format. Tetapi ada juga yang bukan T format, format lain. Kalau kamu memang uh, pandai sudah buat, you can follow your own format lah. Uh. Okay, if you don't know how to do this, then you better follow the T format. Bagi saya, T format ini lebih senang lah di, di sediakan lah. Sebab you boleh nampak ada dua bahagian. Satu bahagian asset dan satu bahagian ialah liability dan uh, modal equity. And the third, cash flow statement. Cash flow statement, um, also we prepare it one call lah. Kita sediakan satu kali ya. So we prepare the... We put down the cash that you receive, okay, uh, from previous month. The cash that you receive for this month. Kalau saya sediakan untuk June kan, mungkin saya ada business di May. I might have business previous month. So, if you prepare it from every month, also can. Okay, you also can prepare it once. Okay, once. And then uh, cash receive plus net profit minus the all the cash payment for example then you will get the cash balance okay you need the segi cash flow statement no worry huh? later on i will show you step by step how to prepare that okay and how about financial resources apakah sumber kewangan especially if the company do not have enough money cash to do business okay even big company big company also might face this sort of problems big syarikat yang sangat besar ah syarikat uh, seperti um, uh, syarikat kilang yang besar pun mungkin menghadapi uh, masalah ini so what they can say is what they can do is they can, can use these few steps to find extra money for their company to do business okay Salah satu ialah jika syarikat itu mempunyai aset, okay, mereka boleh menjual aset mereka. Okay, uh, contohnya sebelum ini disebabkan oleh MCO kan, banyak syarikat uh, 
telah terpengaruh lah. Okay, uh, especially companies that are doing tourism. They have uh, many cars and they have vans and bus uh, who are who are used for the purpose of sending the tourists to the many tourist places. But their problem now is because there are no tourists. Even until today, we don't see many tourists coming to uh, Malaysia, especially to Sabah, we don't see many tourists. So with that when the cars that they have, they are just putting there. Okay, they still have to pay money. So many of them, they decided to sell the assets, the cars, or the vans that they have because they they don't know until when only we can see the tourists pelanjung katanga tidak tahu bila so that is the problem that they are facing so they are selling the assets this is one way okay another way to get more money to do business is to borrow money from the bank we call it to get a bank loan pinjam wang dari bank lah but normally you need a guarantor you need uh, something to guarantee your, your borrowing. Third, to apply for government grant earlier, minjang wang dari grant agency lah. Agency kerajaan pun ada grant-grant kecil lah, khasnya untuk uh, perniagaan uh, kecil dan sederhana, SME. So for SME, they can borrow money from the government agency that for the purpose to help them to, to expand the business. And last, you request the debtors to pay you back. Kalau ada orang meminjam wang dari syarikat ini, kita minta lah mereka membayar balik kita secepat mungkin. Eh? So these are some of the methods. Okay, how about you? If you just start your business, normally you don't have assets. It's very hard for you to get a bank loan. So the best way for you to, to borrow money is you apply for government grant. Especially grant for... Uh, Young entrepreneur, okay, kita ada grant khas untuk uh, usahawan kecil, khas untuk perniagaan kecil, khas untuk uh, uh, siswa perniagaan, they call it siswa perniagaan and so on. So we have this grant, you can search up. And then, okay, uh, before this, I do explain a little bit about break-even analysis. So this is to refresh your memory lah. Okay, break even analysis, BE point in simple, we call it BE point, is calculate to identify the minimum sales amount. Okay, minimum amount that require to cover the total cost. Seperti tadi kita lihat total cost ialah jumlah cost yang kita perlu bayar untuk sesuatu syarikat. So if the total cost, you can see the total line here represent the total cost. Okay. If the total cost here is very high, but we are making, uh, we are not selling any quantity, then the company is facing loss, kerugian. Kerana cost tinggi daripada jualan. Tetapi kalau jualan ini, jualan lah, kalis yang di bawah ini menjadi uh, the big dotted line. Kalau jualan ini meningkat menjadi lebih tinggi dari cost okay when the sales higher than cost then the company is making profit making profit okay so what we are trying to find is a break even point di tengah-tengah ini dipanggil break even point di mana kita perlu tahu berapa quantity minimum yang kita ingin jual okay berdasarkan point ini kita kira lah berapa quantity minimum yang kita perlu jual Untuk mengelakkan syarikat ini mengalami kerugian. Okay, so we can also count it by value. How much sales in value that we have to sell to make profit. Okay, so this is the minimum quantity of products to sell to avoid facing any loss. So B point can be calculated in two ways, in unit and also in money, sales value. At P point, the company face no loss but also enjoy no profit. Okay, let's see. I'm looking at, okay. Let's say uh, I skip the front part because we what we know, need to know is we need to know the total cost. Here, 
Okay, the total cost is 40,000. The variable cost is 15,000. But we need to know the unit cost. Cost the unit, eh? Cost the unit. Jadi, kita perlu juga tahu cost uh, harga jualan. Kalau tidak dibayar, kita lah. So, the first thing you need to hear beside the total cost is you need to know the price for every unit. Price untuk setiap potol ialah 12 ringgit. Okay, kalau lah tidak diberitahu. Okay, so how to find this is total sales divided by the quantity. Total sales divided by the quantity of sales. Oh, where is the quantity of sales given here? Quantity of sales is 5,000 unit. Okay, so the total cost is 40,000. Fixed cost 25,000. Total sales is 60,000. So to produce this 5,000 unit, uh, we, we have this cost and these are the sales. So we take total sales, 60,000 divided by 5,000, you get the 12 ringgit per bottle. Okay, so this formula seems a, a bit difficult, kan? Can I result? What you need to do is you need to know what are the selling price of one unit. Harga jualan seunit. 12 ringgit ini sebenarnya ialah harga jualan seunit. Okay, the selling price of a bottle. Okay, selling price of a bottle, 12 ringgit. Kemudian kita perlu tahu apakah cost seunit. Okay, variable cost seunit. So we take the variable cost, divide by the quantity, we get 3 ringgit per bottle. 3 ringgit is the variable cost per unit. Okay, variable cost per unit. Dengan angka-angka ini barulah kita boleh kira. So to calculate the break-even point, we take the fixed cost divided by the price minus variable cost. So the fixed cost, cost the top, yala 25,000. Minus by the cost untuk satu pot, uh, harga se, se poto, tolak dengan cost se, se unit. Eh? 12 minus 3, so you get 2,778 units. So these are the unit that they have to sell. Okay. So if you not want to know what is the selling price, oh, salah, sini ya. Salah, bukan 3 ya. The selling price is 12. So 2778 times 12. Okay, to calculate the selling price. Okay, so we look at the simple one. Now let me go to the... Okay, let me go to the... The Excel. We look at the Excel, it will be easier for you to understand. Just now I just explain a little bit about the format first. Okay, kita buat lah. uh, this one. Look at the Excel, then only you can understand better. Boleh nampak Excel ni? Boleh? Can you see the Excel? Okay, let me make it bigger. Maybe it's a bit small. Okay, katakanlah. Katakan. Uh, these are the figures. Okay, katakan ini ialah angka-angka yang anda lihat. Uh, angka tapat, anda tapat untuk uh, membuat perniagaan kali ni. Ya. For example, like I say, uh, untuk syarikat ABC Company, okay, ABC Company do business in 2020 from October to December. Katakanlah ini contoh saja. So the company investment modal yang dimasukkan dalam syarikat ini ialah seribu ringgit. Okay, kemudian jualan dalam tiga bulan ini ialah sembilan ratus lima puluh ringgit. Kemudian inilah expenses ataupun jumlah kos yang syarikat ini ada. So, uh, cost of raw material bahan mentah 280 ringgit katakan. Wages upah uh, ataupun gaji untuk pekerja 80. Salaries gaji untuk pengurus 100. Rental 
sewa, sewa untuk gerai ataupun sewa untuk uh, bahan uh, seperti uh, sewa untuk mesin atau kenderaan contohnya seratus ringgit. Promosi cost to promote, for example, you print out the um, brochure and so on, eighty ringgit and transportation fifty ringgit. Ah, so these are the costs. Ini adalah cost. Ah, so okay. Let's say if your company you have three or four products, tiga atau empat jenis produk pun kamu gabungkan bersama. You don't need to prepare one statement for one product. Okay, not one statement for one product, but you can prepare. Um, but you can prepare like you can prepare few uh, one statement for few products for one company. Okay, except if you have different company. Kalau anda ada syarikat yang berbeza, anda bolehlah menyediakan yang berbeza. Tetapi untuk satu syarikat kita sediakan satu saja. So for for me to isi refer, reference, I just copy the data. Okay, I have the statement here already. I put the data at the side. Okay, untuk memudahkan saya membuat um, key in data ini dalam statement ini ya. So we will start with cash flow. We will start with cash flow statement. Okay. Jadi nama syarikat ABC Company will be the first thing you write down. Nama syarikat ABC Company. And then cash flow statement. Tarik untuk ini berkantung kepada data kamu lah. If your data is until uh, January, then you can put in January 2020. Okay. So since the business is between October to November, you just put down until 31st November. Okay, you can see that I put no uh, the words like pro forma and projected already throw away. Eh? I didn't put down because assume that this is the data that you do business, not the projection. Bukan budget lah ini yang data. Anggap ini sebagai data sebenar lah, data yang kamu dapat semasa berniaga tu. Okay, next is first, do you have cash balance? Biasanya untuk syarikat baru, first time you do business, of course you don't have cash balance. So you put down zero here, kosong di sini. Okay, so the cash flow statement is a very long statement normally. Tetapi untuk memudahkan saya, saya kasih ringkaskan saja. So the next thing is I put down cash flow operation. Cash flow. Uh, cash yang saya uh, dapat melalui uh, operasi. Okay. So, ataupun cash yang tunai yang saya bayar uh, melalui uh, semasa beroperasi lah. Tunai yang diterima dan yang dibayar semasa beroperasi. Katakan saya ada revenue. Revenue ialah jualan. Okay, jualan. Apa tu jualan? Jualan ialah harga produk dalam kuantiti jualan lah. Berapa produk kamu jual, berapa kuantiti kamu jual, kamu boleh dapat jualan anda. So, sini ada satu kolom. Kemudian sini ada satu kolom. Biasanya untuk memudahkan, saya suruh kamu buat uh, type di kolom sini ya. Okay. Tetapi untuk, kalau revenue ini banyak, kamu boleh type lah. Kalau ada produk A, okay, jualan untuk produk A, katakanlah produk A. Okay, katakan ada produk A, you can type like this, product A, then you put down how much, katakan 800, oh 800 lah, for example, katakanlah ada, okay, and then revenue, product B, then uh, 150, kalau ada lah, huh? okay, so you have to total it up. You have to add formula here. Tetapi kalau anda hanya satu produk ataupun jualan itu sudah digabungkan, ha? you already total up. You sum up all the, the sales. You don't have a sales of product A, product B. You didn't separate it. You total up all the sales. Then you just put down one figure will do. Okay, 950. Okay. 
dalam kolom yang kedua. So kolom yang ini, kolom yang pertama ini ialah kalau kamu ada beberapa figure, you have few figures you put it down here. If uh, you don't have that, you put it down here. And then cash that you pay. Apakah uh, tunai yang kamu bayar? So I just copy here. Copy. Uh, 280 Untuk memudahkan saya copy satu kali ya So copy dari kata saya yang lain okay. So 280 100 100 promosi transportation So jumlah kos saya ialah 690 Okay, nampak tu? So you just start here, then the system will automatically um, prepare the formula. I already enter the formula here, the function here. Okay, the function is here, so dia akan jumlahkan sendiri ya dalam Excel inilah. So 950 minus 690. Mengapa tolak? Kerana ini kos, kos yang dibayar. So, wang sudah dibayar, sudah keluar. So, you must have negative sign here. Okay. Kemudian revenue, sebab revenue ialah wang yang diterima. Money that we receive must be positive. Money that we pay must be negative. Sebab sudah di, uh, dibayar, ditolak. Okay, so negative. After that, capital, di bawah sikit. Cash flow financial activities. Ha? Kalau ada, ialah biasanya kita for the first time when we do business kali pertama, we must have capital investmentnya tu um, tunai yang kita simpan dalam syarikat ini. Okay, so normally if you have more than more than this, you can put it down here. Kalau tidak, you simpan saja di sini seribu. Ha? Okay, jadi Ya, di bagian ini juga saya sudah simpan formula. The formula is here already. So you just plug in your figure. How much money capital atau modal yang kamu simpan dalam syarikat ini. Katakan dalam syarikat ini ialah seribu. Ikut saja seribu. I put it here dan my closing balance is 1260 ringgit. Okay, closing balance. Maksudnya pada hujung uh, perniagaan ini, orang yang memegang duit ini, the people who in charge of the money should have this amount in his hand. Okay, should have this amount in his hand. So this is the cash balance. Huh? Ini dipanggil cash balance. Jika ini dipanggil cash balance. A 1260 ringgit is the cash balance. That means how much cash you have at the end. Atau hujung perniagaan ini ataupun pada hari uh, account ini disediakan. Ha? Hari account ini disediakan. Ini ialah amount yang kamu ada. Jumlah wang yang kamu ada. Dipanggil cash balance. Okay, 1260 ringgit. Kita perlu sediakan ini dulu. This uh, cash flow statement ataupun penyata aliran tunai ini terdahulu kerana this figure is needed when we prepare balance sheet. Okay, angka ini diperlukan lah semasa kita menyediakan uh, accounts uh, balance sheet iaitu penyata kunci kira-kira nanti. Eh. So after that, you don't need this anymore. Eh. Delete lah. Okay. Um, kenapa saya diri? Sebab ini statement dia. I, I put the figure di sebelah here. Saya copy data itu di sebelah sini untuk memudahkan saya key in angka di sini. Okay, untuk memudahkan saya key in angka. Selepas key in, saya boleh buang sudah. Jangan simpan di sebelah sini ya. You boleh simpanlah di satu sheet yang di depan seperti sini ya. Okay, next we have to prepare the income statement. Okay, income statement, penyata pendapatan. 
is prepare normally like i say for one year but for this one we prepare for just for three three months only yeah? so about data ini uh, ataupun angka yang saya dapat ini hanya untuk tiga bulan so we prepare for three months so same thing we when we start the, to prepare the account we have to put in the company name first nama syarikat and then you put down income statement dated berapa hari bulan Biasanya mesti simpan satu tarik lah, tarik yang terakhir. Oke, okay. di mana kita uh, membuat pernyataan ini ya. So, this is the format yang sudah saya sediakan awal-awal. So, untuk ini saya pun perlukan data kan, saya guna data yang sama. Same figure. Paste di sebelah untuk memudahkan saya membaca dan copy the figures to to the format ah huh? saya kasih pesakan sedikit okay alright so apapun okay so for here you just follow the format follow this format jadi capital investment memang ini tidak perlu masuk ah huh? ini x ah huh? tak perlu masuk Capital investment ini tak perlu masuk ah, I create it. Okay, tak perlu masukkan di dalam income statement. Capital investment you only put into the cash flow. Tak payah masukkan. Okay, kemudian you ada revenue. Revenue anda pun boleh panggil sales revenue sama, sama maksudnya, iaitu hasil jualan hasil jualan. So seperti tadi saya bagi tahu, if you have produk yang berbeza dan uh, angka itu berbeza, you boleh tag di sini lah. Uh, contohnya 800, kemudian you tambah satu kolom, eh, satu row, and then you add on the other figure. Okay? And then you total up here. Tetapi kalau contohnya, if for example, if you only have one total figure, One total figure for all the products is fine also because you only need to know how to prepare a very simple one. You don't need to prepare a very detailed one. So for a simple one, you just total up your dua, yaitu jualan, jualan 950. You can see that after I type, the formula will uh, automatically count for you. Uh, so the formula is there. So minus cost of goods sold. Okay, sini yang penting ah, you have to know what are the costs that is related directly to the production of the products, okay, or services. Apakah cost yang anda guna khas untuk menyediakan produk? Okay, so the first is the cost of raw material, bahan mentah. Bahan mentah, raw materials is directly used to prepare the product for sales. So this is cost of cost of good sold. Okay. Bagaimana dengan wages? Wages ialah gaji untuk pekerja. Biasanya gaji untuk pekerja ini, uh, gaji ini digunakan khas untuk pengelolaan produk. Okay. So also this is cost of good sold. Sebab pekerja ini uh, kita bayar gaji mereka kerana mereka menyediakan produk ini untuk dijual. Okey, jadi ini berkaitan langsung dengan pengelolaan produk. Jadi ini kita masukkan lah in cost of goods sold. Kemudian untuk gaji pengurus, manager, pengurus tidak berkaitan langsung. Okey, mungkin pengurus ini menguruskan uh, perkara lain, bukan terlibat secara langsung dalam pengelolaan. So normally for manager we put it under expenses. Huh? Same thing for rental, sewaan juga. Okay, kita put the under expenses. Promosi, promotion juga. Okay, how about transportation? Same thing. Transportation also we put it under expenses. About pro transportation ini tidak semestinya berkaitan langsung dengan uh, bahan mentah. Tetapi kalau uh, ada kos kos penghantaran bahan mentah, uh, ini berkaitan secara langsung. 
Okay. Ataupun kos yang berkaitan secara um, direct, okay, secara langsung dengan uh, penghantaran barang uh, kepada peniaga, uh, kepada pembeli, penghantaran barang kepada pembeli, itu boleh masuk di sini ya, kos of kos of. Tapi transportation ini kalau tidak dibaiki tahu, if not clearly stated, this is related to uh, raw material or related to delivery of products we put it under expenses. Kalau tak pasti, kita simpan bawa expenses. Expenses di sini ya, expenses. Kalau kita tahu ini berkaitan dengan langsung, berkaitan langsung dengan bahan mentah, kita simpan di cost of goods sold. So my cost of goods sold only two, two costs. Okay, cost yang berkaitan secara langsung dengan pengelolaan produk hanya dua. So it's only two, I just copy and paste. Cost of raw materials and wages. Jadi, 280 dan 80. So, the formula count, count for me. The cost of goods sold in total is 360 ringgit. Okay, same thing with the statement just now. This is the figure that we pay. Amount ini dibayar. So, we put down negative lah untuk memudahkan pengiraan. So it's negative. So 950 minus 360, you get 590. Okay, kalau you dapat figure yang positif, maksudnya gross profit. Okay, gross profit. But if you got a negative figure, negative ah, maksudnya gross loss. Okay, untung untung kasar ataupun uh, uh, lugi kasar lah, untung atau lugi. Okay. So, how about the other expenses? Cost yang lain, kita masukkan di bawah. We put it under expenses. Minus the expenses. Oops. Sorry. We put in under minus the expenses. So, I copy down the figure here. 100, 180, and 50. So, jumlah kosnya ialah 330. Okay, boleh, uh, boleh fahamkan setakat ini ya. So, the net profit untung bersih ataupun rugi bersih kita kita lihat di sini lah. Ini 260 ringgit ialah positif kan? Positif. So, this is pro profit. Okay, this is profit because this is positive. But if you have negative, Negative it means this is loss. Okay, negative is loss. Ah, huh? positive is uh profit. Okay. Uh, you have any questions? Ada soalan tak? Ya boleh uh, on your mic and ask questions. Kalau ada soalan. Uh, I have uh, no Shahira. You raise your hand. Ada soalan? Okay, dia ada soalan ke? Okay. Alright. Kalau dia ada soalan, ha? kita teruskan. Ha? So, boleh fahamkan? So you look at this positive figure. Positive figure is it means you are um, getting profit lah, profit from doing the business for the last three months. But if you get negative, negative it means you are making a loss. So uh, you can find this template. You can find this template in the Schoology. So you can download the template and start to do your simple accounting and if you have question you can ask later so if you have more items you can just add the row here boleh tambah boleh ubah okay after you complete the things same thing i will delete this delete the whole thing okay because what i want is just the statement here i just want the, to see the statement 
I copy it here to make it easier for me to to copy the data into the account. That's the main purpose only. Okay. After I complete the statement, I don't need to refer back to the data again. So I can just delete that. Huh? So you can see this is a company is making profit. And so with this figure, I have to, I can prepare the balance sheet. If I don't prepare the income statement, I can't prepare the balance sheet. So that's why the balance sheet will be the third, third thing. Okay, the balance sheet, like I say, I just explained to you the T format. What do you mean by T? T will see a, word, a horizontal line plus a vertical line. Okay, it looks like a T. So when you draw the two lines, when you after you draw the two lines, it means you are preparing a T format. T format, huh? balance sheet. So on the left hand side here, you will see assets. There are two types of assets, fixed assets and current assets. So normally for small business, uh, business that you just started, you might not have fixed assets. Fixed assets are such, such as uh, houses, rumah, bangunan, uh, kedai, uh, machine yang mahal, yang besar, yang boleh diguna lebih dari satu tahun. And as well as like cars, uh, van, lollies that you use for the business. You put it under fixed assets. And then for current assets, for current assets, this included cash and stock. Biasalah untuk syarikat kecil yang ada ialah cash dan stock. Or even you have a bank. Okay, kalau bank, wang yang kamu simpan di dalam bank untuk syarikat, bank syarikat ini kamu pun simpan di sini ya. Cash, stock, or bank. Tapi biasanya saya explain uh, based on my record uh, my data for example is just cash on this yeah this i simply cash lah. otherwise you can add a row here tanpa stock ah katakan ada stock ada apa apa you can just add in here stock ada stock stock bahan mentah atau stock produk yang kamu sudah beli belum sempat jual tetapi kamu akan menjual kamu boleh simpan di sini stock Okay, and for bank, bank means kalaulah syarikat ini membuka satu akang khas untuk syarikat ini, jadi nilai uh, cash, nilai uh, tunai di dalam syarikat ini, di dalam bank, perlu direkodkan di sini. Kalau dia ada, tidak apa. Okay, I copy this up. So this is the format that we... I prepared earlier. So how about this part? Sebelah kanan, the right hand side, you have liability. Liability ialah hutang syarikat. Hutang ada hutang jangka pendek dan hutang jangka panjang. So normally, like for your project, you are not going to borrow money, right? So you will have zero. Sudah saya setiap awal lah, saya simpan kosong-kosong sudah tu. And next thing is, your owner equity, equity pemilik. Jadi di sini, you have capital. Capital ialah modal syarikat. Okay, you have modal and you have net profit or loss. So, let's start. I'm looking at the figure here. Again, I'm using this figure to prepare my balance sheet. Okay, so what are the figures that I need? Okay, normally, here I only need capital. I only need capital. Revenue, no need. Okay, expenses, semua tidak payah. Okay, so I don't need all this information. I only need the capital. Saya perlu tahu berapa capital saja. Okay, so my capital is 1,000. 1,000. Okay, all the other figures, tidak payah. 
Okay, so you might ask uh, how to prepare the next. Okay, go back to the previous statement that you prepare. Contohnya tadi, Anda sudah sediakan cash flow statement. Ada cash balance di bawah. Closing balance. Cash balance ialah 1260. Okay. This is the cash. Jadi cash syarikat ini 1260. Okay. So, left hand side is higher than the right hand side now. So, what else you have to put in? Sekarang simpan profit atau loss. So, just now I calculate the income statement. When I look at my income statement, okay, the income statement here is the profitative, right? The net profit is positive. Net profit or loss is positive, so it means you have positive. Uh, profit, so saya buang perkataan ini. Is profit positif, jadi uh, profit 260 lah. Kita pak check balik. Income statement 260. So copy back here 260. Then cuba lihat ah uh, ketua dua fikir di sini ya. Uh. Mesti balance. Satu, dua, enam, kosong. Mesti sama dengan sini. Sebelah kiri mesti sama dengan sebelah kanan. Okay. Satu, dua, enam, kosong. So, if you get it balance, kalau angka ini sama, so it means that you prepare it correctly. Okay. Di atas kesilapan kamu buat lah. So, untuk balance sheet ini perlu disediakan selepas hanya boleh disediakan selepas selepas kamu menyediakan uh, penyata akrilan tunai dan penyata pendapatan. After you prepare the other two accounts, then only you are able to prepare this. Because you need the figure from the account that you prepared earlier. Okay, so after that I delete it. Okay, so I prepared the notes for you. So that when you you prepare your balance sheet, you know lah. Okay, you know where to get the cash balance, where to get the net profit, and then you can put it down here. Okay, so this is the third statement. Anyone have any questions? Atasalan. Okay, ada soalan. Saya tunggu nih. Biasanya, uh, this is the a bit um, challenging if you never do account before. But uh, this is not very difficult. As far as you follow, using the template I prepared for you is not difficult. Huh? Okay, if you don't have questions, let me see. Ada soalan? Ya. Yeah. Okay, kalau tiada soalan, kita buat yang terakhir ialah break-even point calculation. Untuk break-even point calculation, biasanya saya bagi tahu ialah, um, okay, um, you have to have fixed cost, cost tetap. You have to have price, harga dan variable cost, uh, cost berubah. Fixed cost and variable cost. This is the cost per unit, huh? 
price for price. one unit. And the variable cost also is the cost for, <clears throat> for uh, producing one unit. Cost untuk menyediakan satu barang produk. Okay. So based on that, then with these three figures, then you can prepare your break even. So the break even point is equal to fixed cost divided by price minus variable cost. Jadi you ikut formula in uh you ikut formula di sini ya. Oh, I didn't give you the formula. Huh? Let me put down the formula later on. You you can put down. It's equal to seven thousand divided by. Okay, so you can see that's the formula that I use. Huh? The functions are huh? formula that I use for for calculation. That okay, so itu saja. Kalau if you have the figures. Okay, let's say if you say you don't have fixed cost. Okay, biasanya kalau tiada fixed cost, kita tidak dapat calculate. Huh? Tidak dapat kira break-even point. If you don't have fixed cost, you cannot calculate the break-even point. And then we also can calculate the break-even point in ringgit. Okay, so take the break-even point, multiply by the price. So let's see, the formula will be Take the quantity, multiply by the price of 12 ringgit. So you will get this figure. Uh, M21,000. Okay. So what other fixed costs? Uh, sorry, not what others. Uh, if you don't have fixed costs, then normally we don't calculate the break-even point. Because the main purpose of this break-even point is to cover the quantity that you must sell to avoid facing loss. Okay, to avoid facing loss. And one very important point we, we must understand here is we assume that your price must be higher than your variable cost. Okay, cost is a unit. Harga mesti high tinggi daripada cost is a unit. Kalau harga ini rendah daripada cost the unit, tak payahlah you buat business kerana business akan menghadapi kerugian. So, when we calculate the variable cost, we have to take all the variable cost into this calculation. Eh? So, this is the, the statement, uh, the, the part about accounting statement and so on. Lagi, ada lagi uh, ada orang mau tanya kalau dia ada kita akan sambung dengan topik yang seterusnya I have one short topic today okay. alright so um, if you have question about this you can ask later lah kalau dia ada soalan sekarang so for the cost of raw materials you can see I total up everything okay Kos untuk paham mentah untuk memudahkan pengiraan saya, saya memang jumlahkan semua dalam satu. I, I total up everything. Okay, of course, if you want to put it into different uh, materials, you can put it. But to make it easy, I total up everything. Okay, untuk memudahkan saya membuat uh, sini dan sini. Okay, so if you don't have questions, I will stop the presenting and we go back to unit 8.